Hey folks, welcome back. And today I want to start a small series on DIY spectroscopy or spectrometry. The terminology is a bit blurry. There's sometimes it's called spectroscopy, spectrometry, spectrography. Um, it's basically about visible wavelengths of light, what we're doing here. I mean, there's also gamma spectroscopy that deals with gamma rays. Don't have that, unfortunately, yet. There's many other kinds of spectroscopy, but we'll focus on visible light here. So this thing here is basically um, the quickest, cheapest, and one of the more neat projects that I tried to build till now. Um, basically, it's a car part tube with a slit in front. It's better to use black electrical tape here. I just had this aluminium tape around. Then you cut a slit here where you put the CD in, should be around 60 degrees, uh, some explanations say 45 degrees, I think my slit is like more at 50 degrees so you'll have to figure that out yourself a little bit. Also maybe tape the back end, closed, you shove the CD inside and you can look into this looking hole here. There you go. Um, I'll just hold this to my phone quick. I'll change to the phone video mode. So, there you go. Um, this is now my phone on video mode. You see the slit in the left corner there where the light comes in. It's pointed to just a standard uh, incandescent light bulb. Yeah, that's too bright. Yeah, focusing and getting the right angle is a bit tricky, but we'll look into, into that later. Also, I'll show you... Um, a mercury uh, vapor lamp, or like a fluorescent lamp quick. Ah, oh, here, it's beautiful. You really see this well. These work quite differently. They have much more distinct um, wavelengths, actually, of the light. It's the, the bands are much clearer than on the incandescent light. Maybe just some small stuff before we continue. Um, I would really suggest you to use cardboard um, instead of like something like a PVC plastic tube. I tried some of these, but I had some trouble. Um, like the inside is much too reflective. You get some weird halos and well also this angle here was really bad, but I had like this one where the angle was quite okay, but it didn't work out as good as the cardboard. So try to get the inside of the tube as non, oops, as non-reflective as possible. It really helps a lot, it gets you a much clearer um, picture. Um, I have a neat little setup back here, but I'll talk about this towards the end of the video, that's a little teaser. But uh, something else that I tried out was just to buy myself one of these cheap little spectroscopes from the China shop, it's like 10 bucks or so. Um, you look inside from the big part well the camera doesn't really have a spectra but if i look at this incandescent light back here i can clearly see the spectra and it has this little knob thingy and that's actually a lens inside it just helps you focus i could actually focus with the carport tube with the smartphone focusing thing you just have to set it to manual but it feels more comfortable to use this here in combination with the smartphone. You just put it here and you can actually like manually focus with your finger. That's quite practical and handy I guess. Um, I mean be creative how you mount this to your smartphone. I had this smartphone adapter for my telescope, you know, that I can put the phone in front of the eyepiece of the telescope. This kind of works. I can just squeeze a spectroscope back here need some Kleenexes to fill up the space, but this works. So, I'd like to make a little tour. I'll use this spectroscope because it's just a little bit easier to use, a little bit better quality. And just check out some everyday light sources and see what we can uh, find out about them. So, let's start with a simple lighter. Let's see how this here looks. picture. Ah, there we go. Thought there should be some blue. 
Um, yeah, the smartphone settings are a bit tricky, but you'll get there. The daylight sky on a cloudy day. This is one of those tube type uh, fluorescent lamps or mercury vapor lamps. The interesting thing with these is um, they like really contain mercury, it's quite a bit, and mercury glows in ultraviolet and you can really see the ultraviolet uh, bandwidth on the spectrum really good. And just a little side note, these lamps work like that, basically the mercury is your primary light source. The ultraviolet from the mercury hits a phosphorus layer in the glass, in the tube, and that breaks it down through fluorescence. And you get a red, green, blue, uh, yellow, I forgot the basic colors, but you get three bands and they basically mix back together to white. That's how they work. A sodium street light. These work uh, uh, like the sodium really produces the glow, so you'll have like a very strong yellow uh, band. Well, we're back in the lab and I want to show you like three last things before I end the video. Um, first of all, maybe you know this from previous videos, my uranium glass, whiskey glass or whatever. This fluoresces under UV light, most uh, uranium glass does. So you send in ultraviolet wavelengths and you get like a, a green wavelength back out, basically. It's kind of similar what happens in the fluorescent lamps, that's why they're called fluorescent lamps. I'll turn off the light quick for this. In general, this stuff works better in darker conditions, is my experience, so try to get the background light out as far as possible. You can see this here. So this is the ultraviolet flashlight. You really see the fluorescence going there. Let's see if this here works. Well, in general, what I find really fascinating about this whole thing is it, it's basically, it's like something like a cosmic barcode system for stuff for matter. Like uh, every element has its um, spectrum, I think even the molecules do. That makes it really neat to find out what is what stuff is made uh, out of, basically. Well, this here will be quite green, I would say. Look at the picture quick. And also the teaser from the before I wanted to show you. Um, these here are basically just glass tubes that are filled with different gases. Most of them are noble gases. So the red one, I'm quite sure is neon. And this one here, I'm quite sure is filled with argon. I'm, I couldn't really verify that yet, but that's actually something I want to do in the next video. And um, I think I'll show you the neon first here. The red one, it's really pretty. Also, small fun fact, just that you know, um, this thing back here is like a, a mini Tesla coil, it's just a cheap kit, like for 15 bucks or so, and if you get a strong electromagnetic field, um, these noble gases kind of uh, start to glow if you get them close to the electromagnetic field, that's really neat. But yes, as I said, we'll go more into this in the next video. Take Spectra. The neon is really cool. We'll also do the argon quick. Come on, light up. Here we go. Another small example of something interesting to do a spectrum of. Um, are like LCD screens, like laptop screens or smartphone screens. They also have these distinct uh,
bands of colors. It's very distinct. It's not as like homogeneous as like daylight or uh, the lighter was before. Most of our have quite like homogeneous um, spectra, but I'm more fascinated with this, you know, the ones that are really like distinct lines. Well, I think that's it for now, for the first video. Before I end, I'll just show you a little graphic that I put together in GIMP. Um, I just compared some of the more interesting spectra that I took in this video. It's not all of them there, but it gives you an idea how different they are. And yeah, in the next video, I really would like to look in um, into looking at this a bit more scientifically and like actually making some measurements and like really proving, it, for example, if this here is argon or if it's something else. That will be the goal for the next video. I hope you'll stick around till then. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye folks.